do not give those who of immature mind your property which Allah God has granted you as a means of support. No, lest they destroy it, but rather give provision to them out of what you have. Clothe them, then give them good advice. These are wonderful words from the Holy Quran for you. And today, like none other, is always going to be a great golden moment as we explore the minds of young and great, great guests every week, every time. Today we have one beautiful Muslim, Islam lady, who has come to talk a little about Islam for us to understand. Last week and a few weeks after, we've had wonderful times with imams and sheikhs and, and you see, it has made me understand Islam the more. It's a beautiful one. Let's go over as we have a golden moment with Mastura. Her name is a mouthful, but it's so beautiful. She's going to mention it herself because I don't want to make a mistake. But as you know, Golden Pillars is always sponsoring this program and Pillars Golden Foundation, where we nurture young girls. Some have gone astray, some got pregnant, but with our projects named Go Back Project, we bring these young girls back to the classroom and make them who God has purposed them to be. Who have you been purposed to help? Who are you supporting? Join us and let's go and really do great things for the lives of young ladies. Let's go over to Mastura Sana. Tahiru, oh, your name is as beautiful as you are. Thank you. Mastura, Sana, Tahiru. Hi. What does it mean? You <laughs> also. Right. Oh, yeah, you can remove I your. Can remove it. Yeah, you can remove it then. Feel free. Yeah. Just let me help you with that. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, I believe you understand what we are doing. We need you safe and alive to fulfill your destiny. Sana, Tahiru, what does it mean? <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, Mom. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I give thanks to the Almighty Allah for giving me yet another chance, and thanks to you for having me on your show. Oh. So much appreciate. All right, so Mastura simple means savior. Oh. Yeah. And Tyre is my dad's name. Then Sana is a family name. Wow. That simple makes my name. So you're a savior. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. So how's Ramadan going? Alhamdulillah, so far, the Ramadan has been wonderful. Mm. The blessings we are praying to Allah to bless us with, Alhamdulillah, we are seeing changes. Mm. And we pray Allah bless us more. Oh, wow. Now you're really fasting. Alhamdulillah. I can tell, because when you came and I gave you water, you said no. That's really yeah. our first. Okay. But I think you mentioned that your, your friend is not fasting because she is in her menses and that made me remember what the um guest said last week that ladies in their yeah. menses come up. so you see i learned a lot from last yeah, week course, okay course, which means that during the period and um, i think every woman will have to break for some time because it's within yeah, the month yeah this is just basically because um some people have been restricted from fasting during the month of ramadan fasting is compulsory mm -hmm. but the age a woman who is menstruating, mm. a woman who is breastfeeding the child, a woman who is pregnant, and a little child is not supposed to fast. So my friend is not fasting because she's menstruating. So when you are menstruating, you don't fast and you don't pray either. Okay. That is the world. That is Islam. You don't so, go to the mosque at all. Yeah, you don't go to the mosque at all. So in in that period, you are not. You are kind of seen as. Impure. impure yes so it says that you are impure and you are supposed to kind of purify yourself before you start worshiping god so after your menstruation you perform a holy bath okay. which is called goso so there's a special bath you bath it's what? Goso. Janabat. 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 Okay. so it's a special bath you bath like after right after your menstruation okay. then you are pure to pray okay. or have your fast. Okay. So do you go back and pay the arrears or yes? Yeah, so, so yeah, no, you go back and pay the arrears. Mm. So after the fasting, when everything is done, then you count from when you are menstruating the number of days you missed during okay. the fasting. Then you pay for mm. those number of days. You don't pay above that because it's not your fault. It's nature. Mm. Menstruation is nature. So you pay them. Say if it was five days. You pay exactly five days. Mm. If it's six days, you pay six days. So that, that's why then, when the Ramadan is over, you still have to continue. Yeah, you, when the Ramadan is over, then there's, after Ramadan, there's Shita Shawa. 
it's like six fasting days mm -hmm. you do it's kind of to uh, accompany the moon okay. the precepts so after that then you that you were menstruating during the ramadan you pay the number of days mm -hmm. you couldn't fast during the month of ramadan okay. and is it a disadvantage to be a woman in islam it's never a disadvantage it's okay. even a blessing wow okay yeah, it's okay. even a blessing because during the month of ramadan women do most of the work because as a woman you're supposed to uh, recently, I, I saw one statement. Someone was like, during the month of Ramadan, women eat 10% and they try to feed 90% oh, okay. of people in oh. the house. This is because you, you being the woman, you're supposed to cook for the family, you're supposed to make sure everybody has eaten and all that. So at the end of the day, you are exhausted, you are tired, but you still have to eat. So, it's not, and in Islam, it's seen that you, the woman, that you are going through all that. You get blessings for it. So that's why it's even in Ramadan, you are encouraged to feed somebody, encouraged to give something to give to somebody. So even though it's your responsibility as a woman to feed the family, but in the other hand, Allah is blessing you for mm -hmm. feeding the family or for doing that the work. So mostly during Ramadan, people are advised to go to the mosque and clean the mosque, do charity work, things that is on the right path that you know, Alhamdulillah. At the end of the day, you're not doing it for anybody, you're doing it for yourself because you're getting the lessons for it. Mm. Hmm. That's how beautiful Ramadan is. It's really beautiful. I think then the woman should be getting more blessings, as you said, because you know, we are givers. Yes. And I love Islam for one thing. They're given us to the arms given, given to the yeah. poor. It's, it's, one, it's the pillar of Islam. It's part of the pillar of Islam that you should give arms to the poor. It's called zakat. Zakat. Mm -hmm. So they give to any poor person or their specific people you give right. to. So Islam is not restricted. You give zakat or you give um, arms to everybody, okay? But there are some particular ones that you really have to look for. People who really need it. So you see, because when you see some people, you know they need it. But on the other hand, you look at someone else, you like, this person really need it. So Islam is like, give it to them. But don't do about your strength. Don't do about your strength. Do what you can do. So those you can give to you, give to them. We are not forcibly restricted. Uh, can I, it's not mandatory for you to give to everybody. Mm. No. Okay, so um, I see that most of the people who are in the marketplaces, the Muslims, they, they give to them. Um, the beggars, the mm. uh, the mad people, religiously. Mm. And what are the blessings they get? What are the right. blessings? So in the Quran, it says that you should feed the needy, you should clothe them. So when you see them on the road or on the streets, you know that they are, they are homeless. They have nothing to do. So instead of giving something to someone who is like who is someone, someone who is having a home, having everything, why not give it to someone who is homeless, who has nothing to do? In a, in a way, you are encouraging the person to also give out. So assuming I see someone on the street and I help the person, and the pain maybe I'm able to take the person out of the street. Definitely, the person will be encouraged to help others. So gradually, we're able to care or kind of reduce the number of people on the streets begging. That's why it's so advisable to rather give to people on the street. So at the end of the day, everybody will kind of be comfortable and not rather. Wow, well, we already have a golden name to it, Mastura. Powerful, powerful. And my dress is proudly sponsored by Jinat. Jinat is a beautiful daughter of mine. And as I always tell you, religion is no barrier for me. I flow with everyone, even though I'm a Christian, because I believe that we need to be at peace with each other if it lies in our power to do so, as my Bible teaches me. Thank you so much for watching the Pillars Golden Moment. And also, my dress is by Monique Fashions. You see, I love African women, and she does it all for me. Beads and all the rest. And also, we are proudly sponsored by Divine Redemic. We do powerful paper bags for hotels, for restaurants, for funerals, any occasion. Call on us on 054-2043519 and we'll be there to brand your occasion for you. It's always spectacular when you use our packaging and our paper bags. And also, Mother's Day is here. But in fact, you don't even have to wait for Mother's Day to appreciate anyone. Golden Voice Limited, one of the sponsors of Pillars Golden Moment, is always here to, you know, give you powerful citations. This is last year's Mother's Day, a sacrifice without price. By the time you finish reading this and you give this to your mother, she will appreciate you and thank you and bless you with the blessings of Allah 
for giving her such a powerful citation. Call on us and call on me. I don't just write with my hands, I write with my heart and you'll be blessed. Let's go over to Mastura and still have a good time. Mastura, Sana, Tahiru. <laughs> I love it. So give him. And this is just by the way. You know when you give to people, you touch their hearts, just like giving to Allah. Yes. And, and Allah will cause others to bless you and He Himself will bless you. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's good that people appreciate their mothers. And it's your mother in town here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm honestly. Oh, like me, I'm sorry. Well, but you know, an orphans like us, well, I'm an orphan, I call myself an orphan, but God's eyes are on us. Allah sure. really takes care of orphans. Of I mean, He makes people to bless us. Of course, of course. Wow. So let's go back to our topic on giving in Islam. That's the main thing we're talking about today because. I want to learn more and I believe my viewers out there on Facebook and YouTube and everywhere want to learn more about giving because last week I learned so much about fasting and I was baffled by the benefits of fasting in Islam. So today I want to know more. So flow and tell us everything you know about giving in Islam and you know, let me give everything I have. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Islam is a beautiful religion. It's even the name Islam itself shows peace or it tells us that there's peace. So in a way it tells us to care for each other, to give for to give to each other. Okay, that's why even in the Quran it tells you that when you locate an orphan or when you see someone who is needy, do not hesitate. No matter how small you have, you should give out to that person, give out to the needy and inshallah Allah will bless you for the smallest thing. You give it. Let me give you a, a, a small story. Mm -hmm. There, it's, it's a history though. There is this woman who, in her community, she was like the most generous person in like in the community. She's so rich and she gives to the poor. She helped build mocks for prayer because wow. you know, in Islam, even if you build mocks for people to pray, the number of times the the person is praying, you get a blessing for it. Mm -hmm. So it's encouraged and. Advisable for you to give um to build a mox for wow. you. To so if you have, you do it. But if you don't have, Allah still blesses you regardless. Okay. So it doesn't matter. So this woman have right. She's rich. She does all kind of good things. Okay, she does all kind of good things. And one day she went for Hajj. That's going to Mecca. Mm -hmm. So after going through all the processes, there's a lot of processes when you go to Mecca. After going through all the processes. She has to do two nafla, it's like two raka, you pray twice. So after praise, a, let me say, a wretched man, a man like she, she was not so dressed, she was not looking so good, came to her and she was like, oh, she needs money to buy something. Yes, at the moment she had nothing on her, she has already spent everything, but she had a golden ring. Yes, that's how wonderful. Oh, yeah. I have good people all about me. I love yeah. the white gold into you. Know? Yeah. She had a golden ring. Oh. She moved the ring and she gave it to the man. Wow. Just like that. She was that generous. So when she died, her daughter dreamt of her and she was telling her daughter that upon all the good that she did in this world, golden moxes, helping the needy, buying food for people, all what she did. The one that she gave that small that went to the man who was homeless, <laughs> that was the one God appreciated the most. Oh wow! So it's like the little things you do Ooh. even count. So you don't really need to do something big. You don't really need to have it all to help for Allah to bless you. Even the smallest thing you do, Allah blesses you for it. And that's how beautiful it is mm. when you have and it's like it just help the needy. Just do it because. Hmm. You know, one day God will bless you for it. So you don't do, you don't give arms, or you don't help people expecting something back. Hmm. Though it's nature, sometimes you get it back. But with Islam, you just do it with the mindset that you're looking for the sake of Allah. Hmm. So you give it out for the sake of Allah. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah, and Alhamdulillah, Allah will bless you for you doing that. Hmm. Hmm. Now, you see the way I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm, I'm, I keep getting ghost posts all over me. It's it's really deep. That means that you don't have to have the whole world to mm. give. The little you have, yeah. God even knows your heart. Allah knows your heart that you have hundreds of years and you're giving away 10 cities mm. or you're giving away 50 cities. And it's, it's about proportion heart. with a pure heart. Yes. And what do you mean by pure heart? Pure heart is like they're giving out not because you want to be praised for it, mm. not because you want people to feel like you are so good, mm. but because you want it to be like Allah should bless you. Yes. 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 
can do. Hmm. I remember some time in Accra, there's this Muslim man who, I think every Thursday evening, he would call all the children in the area and be sharing toffees and biscuits to us. He did that religiously. What is that aspect of it? It's Sadaqa. Sadaqa? Yeah. It's encouraged that as a Muslim, once in a while, you give up. So Allah have made, Allah have made the world so beautiful that he knows that at some point in time there are some people that they are suffering, there are some people that need help. So he tells you that you that are giving you, it's not by your mind, it's I Allah who has given you. So because I've blessed you, also bless somebody. As I hear of some stories that you bless others and they take the blessing to an evil spirit and juju and stuff and work against you. Do you believe in mm. that? I don't believe in that. Mm. Okay, so it's, it's true that it's happening that sometimes when you bless somebody, the person you it to you. I've not really seen some, but if you are doing it, you know you are doing this for the sake of Allah. And Allah says that if you do it for my sake, I'll be there to protect you and guide you. Mm. So if you are doing it for the sake of Allah, then you pray to Allah, then you know that you've not done anybody wrong. No matter what the person will use, whatever you've done, you, you give it to the person, it's only like, mm. yeah. really I sure because I am I've experienced it. Someone I gave something to, and I went somewhere, it was prophesied on me that if I give something to someone I love, but the person didn't use it for what I intended or she intended, but she's using and chanting on it every day against me. And as you rightly said, though I pray and believe that it will not affect me, but the person is using it against me. So if I wasn't strong enough, it would have worked against me. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that. If you believe in Allah, you're doing it for the sake of Allah. So Allah is there to guide you and protect you because Allah knows you did it with a pure heart. Okay, okay. You didn't offend anybody. Okay. You didn't do anything bad against anybody. This is you. So because of the belief you have in God, the prayers you keep on praying, mm -hmm. even no matter what the person tries to do, Allah is still praying. Oh, wow. That's awesome. We are still on the pillars golden moments with our beautiful. You see the way she's intelligent. I believe that age is just a number. She's young but very wise. I have one question for you again. Okay. Um, do you believe in Titan? Or the same as arms given in Islam? Mm -hmm. Taking one tenth of your proceeds, your income, and giving to the poor, and, and giving to the church. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in that? Mm -hmm. You also give it. So yeah, it's more of the arms given yes. and given yes. to the poor. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I heard of a story of um, a man who said that whenever you give to the poor, I am poor. And Mastura gives to me. If you give me 10 Ghana series, you have shut the doors of my blessings for that particular day. And your door has been opened twice wider. Is it true? <laughs> no, you, you have blessed me. Okay. So your door will be open twice wider. The man will be closed because you have given to me. So the blessing has to come to you and not to me. Because whatever has to come from heaven, you have given me. So. You are now like my God, so it's God who is going to supply. But that's what somebody said. Is it really true? No, I don't. I don't really think that we. Really oh, what well, doesn't it sound good? It or sounds good, but I think like you, the person receiving it, also. Yeah, receive because you received it. That's why I'm causing the blessing. Mm -hmm. So I also blessed for it. So I don't. Okay, I don't really have. I don't ah, really have because yeah. I believe that there's more blessing in giving than receiving. So the more yeah. you give, the more you receive. But the one you are giving to would not be blessed because she didn't give us or it shouldn't be so or she, she, she also gets a little portion of it because yeah, and she I, also accepted it yeah and i believe that person might also have given to somebody the person who gets a blessing from that mm, so, so it's like it the more money. you give the more you get a blessing mm -hmm. so i give you i get my blessing you give somebody you get your blessing the person also transfers and the blessing flows that way mm. that's what i believe mm -hmm. one thing you said that i want to reiterate on is the woman sharing food during the Ramadan mm -hmm. and that they give out 90% but they are supposed to get more because they just take 10%. So is it is it that uh, if you give more food, you get less you know, all this money? Okay, the 90 10% are you it's not like it's there that women get 10% of what they give. No, it's just someone's funny thing because during Ramadan women work the most honestly. Though men also involved they share stuff they put this is back. Most of the time, the women are cooking, sharing, and doing and stuff. So, 97% of the women, there's some funny things someone said that 
during Ramadan, women only take 10 percent. By the end of the day, the 90 percent of what all what the food they do it go out, it goes to other people. Then Allah says it's blessing women for the work because honestly, honestly, during Ramadan, women work a lot. Is that all the cooking and yeah, supplying, the cooking, supplying everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they use their own money or the um, cheapy man's give or the most give or the husband's give? Mostly their husband's give. Okay. But that doesn't mean it's always their husband's. Some women are the they are rich. Mm. They just do it. Okay. Some of them too. It's not like they are rich. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them too. It's not like they are rich. Mm. But for the blessings of it, mm. they do it. Okay. So sometimes it's from their husband's. Sometimes from yourself, sometimes it's from just people around mm -hmm. who just give to them to mm -hmm. do so transfer it now. Okay. Or this not to want to salute the chief imam of Sunyani and Fia Prick and all the other chief imams who are doing a great job. I mean nurturing all the youth out there and leading them in this fast of Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak to all of you and we salute you so much. This program is special for our Muslim viewers. In fact, you are doing well. You have received all the way from Tema. I salute you, Muhammad. is Yani Market. He changes dollars. He's a good man. I salute you and all the Muslims who watch this program religiously. God bless you so much. Mm -hmm. If you are still on the Pillars Golden Moment and we are about wrapping up with this beautiful wise lady, mm -hmm. you are a Muslim lady. How does it affect you on campus? Because I know you are a computer scientist in the University of Energy and Natural Resources. How does Islam in your, you know, your beautiful gear, sorry, how does it affect you? Or does it affect you in a way? Alright. This, this, this is a nice story. So, um, I've been covering up since I was a kid. So, it's a normal thing for me. But, I've faced a lot of challenges too. So, sometimes you go to class and someone will be like, you're always on this, not to feel what? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, like. Right. Like because let me say from level hundred to four hundred, you've seen on this. What well, at least once for like this move it and feel okay. Someone will come to me and be like, I've never seen you, we want to see you like, uh, like for real show it today. <laughs> no, I don't want <laughs> so, like no, it's part of my faith. It it depicts who I am, it depicts my religion. So you can't see my hair and I don't feel hot. I'm used to it. You're used like, to it. Was it me? I'm used to it now. Yeah. And so, I it. <laughs> <laughs> so the challenge we have is that some some people maybe say from their background they don't they're not really forced into it mm -hmm. but they don't really do so when they come to campus you don't really see them in it so when sometimes some of your colleagues try to compare you mm -hmm. but what we try to let them understand is that they are from a different background okay mm -hmm. the place i am from is different from where she is so the moment you see that this person is a fellow muslim mm -hmm. but the person is not always saying yeah, well, the person doesn't feel the family you try to get closer to talk to the person and gradually the person will change. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the challenges we have on campus. But for me, I'm used to it. I don't really have challenges. Um, is it mandatory for every Muslim lady to work? Yeah, you're supposed to come. It's mandatory. Yeah, it's hmm. This is interesting because I went to Dubai some time and it's like you don't see any woman's face or anything. All you see are yes. eyes, <laughs> black eyes. I'm like, wow, this is every woman. Yes. So it, it, it says that. Um, as a woman, you're supposed to cover from head to toe, mm -hmm. and no one is supposed to see you this cover part of it. Uh, let me see. Uh, you, can, yeah, you can show your face, mm -hmm. but these people would cover everywhere. It's like they are really portraying mm -hmm. it. Like, so you can, you are supposed to cover everywhere. So what's the essence and of covering? What the essence, essence is that your body is seen as a temple, temple, temple of God. A temple of God. You're not supposed to expose. You're not supposed to show it everybody. Okay. And it has been said to the guys that. When you see a woman, lower your gaze. Okay. Okay. So, as a guy, you're supposed to lower your gaze. Mm -hmm. So, let me say, for example, during the Ramadan, it has been so difficult for the guys because not everybody is covered up. And you can't force people to cover up. People, they are who they are. So, some people don't really wear kind of clothes, they wear what they want. So, as a guy, you're supposed to lower the gaze. So, you, the woman, you knowing that it's mandatory for the guy to lower the gaze. As a woman, you're supposed to cover up mm -hmm. so that when he sees you, so you can help him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not trick mm -hmm. Because I know that during the time to no sex until after. Yes. With your wife. It's your, your wife. It's your wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's your wife. Wow. And so after the fast, let me say within that night, when you break your fast. No, it's time to just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it's time for the time for you to eat mm -hmm. for her fasting. Mm -hmm.
from that time onwards, you can't have anything sensual. Wow, this is awesome. So we are just wrapping up. Your golden question. There's always a golden question, one particular question. And I believe that you, you, you go out spoken. Let me make it brief. You are going for a job and there's a great opportunity. You are looking for a job as a computer scientist for so long and you hit a big job. But they tell you, no, no, you can't wear your sari. You can't. You have to look good because you want it to look good. And you are lacking. You are in poverty. Everything is going you are, and this is what is going to help your family make it. Will you decide to move it and compromise on the Islamic values and virtues? Because, I mean, you are, you are, you are, you are hungry to death. Should I say that? What will you do? <laughs> All right. So, let me, I'll take it from two angles. Okay. Taking it to my religion, I believe no matter what I'm facing, or no matter what I'm doing, God have a purpose and a reason for it. So, I have gotten... I've probably gotten that way because the Almighty feel like it's time. In the other hand, the Almighty test us. So it might also be a test. Okay. So if I get there and you feel like I should move my hijab before you take me, I'll take him to the second angle. I feel like before I work for you, I have to be comfortable with who I am. Mm -hmm. My comfort contributes to my productivity. Okay. Okay. So assuming I'm always covered at 24 7, then all of a sudden you want me to. Kind of, let me say for example, wear shorts. Mm -hmm. At the first place, I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. So when I get to the work, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm you trying to get I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. My mind is not at rest. So, what is the probability that I'm going to give a higher productivity mm -hmm. at your work? Mm -hmm. But if you let me be myself, I'm okay. When I'm okay, I'm just in what I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about the dressing. My mind is somewhere else. My mind, my mind is on the way. So at the end of the day, the productivity increases. Mm -hmm. But the, the moment that I'm kind of meaning not to dress who I am, then my mind is on how what I'm wearing, mm -hmm. then productivity what this is. That's the angle. The second angle is that it's my religion mm -hmm. and I portray it. Mm -hmm. So before you accept me, you have to respect the way you are. Respect who I am, the way I am. That's how I came. Mm -hmm. And me coming to your work means I'm going to respect whatever you have. Mm -hmm. So the moment you are trying to alter what I'm doing, and which you're ushering what you're ushering who I am, and my religion is against it. So I don't think I will move it. I will agree to that. I'll try to convince them to understand that it's my religion and they have to accept it for who I am. Even if they don't, I believe that God will provide another one. So you leave that job because you will not compromise on your I'll try to convince them, them first to understand, understand that this is my religion and this is. Oh, I'm going to be. So let's say that as a journalist, mm -hmm. and I'm a Christian like me, I don't have to wear trousers. But this is a profession that you move with only men. And, and sometimes it's better and safer and more security conscious to wear trousers because you, you are in with the guys who fall down. I mean, and, and sometimes you, uh, I mean, you may have to open your legs and look at the rocks. So and is it not better to rather wear the trousers and be safer among the men or male, I mean, dominated? Yeah. Occupation than to say that I'm mean, because I don't believe in trousers, I'll wear skirts and mm -hmm. not whether you expose your legs and everything. Okay, okay. If, if it is me, I'll wear a trousers. You wear a trousers because yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wear it's safer. Trousers. Yes, it's more safer. It's, it's not is like it's kind of you yeah. wear a trousers in this land. Yes, I mean, okay. I mean, I wear trousers, oh, you wear but trousers. you wear a longer okay. top. Okay. You don't wear trousers there in front of you. Show you. Yeah, no. <laughs> you wear a long top. Okay. So I won't mind wearing the trousers. Mm -hmm. And is I was saying that at a place where you are restricted, you have no option. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to do for your survival or for mm -hmm. the time being. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just do it. Just do it. But you still have a connection with Allah. Allah. Oh. You know that God is with you. But Allah. as at this moment, you have no option. You have nothing to do. So you just do it. Mm -hmm. And God will understand that. You have no option, mm -hmm. so you have to be. You know what I'm looking at? I'm trying to see your hair. Maybe you have to let me look at it. But I see that it's very busy. No, 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 we're not on set. <laughs> when you're on um, campus, I mean, you show it to your um, roommates, you are free about it. But when you come out, it's when you come back. Okay. I mean, I love your spirits. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever your hand finds to do, you do it well. If you're an Islamic lady, you do it well. Your last words about girls and their talents and how you want them to, you know, develop their talents to the glory of Allah. The last words. Okay. So, I, so I, the last words I would tell girls is that always have a positive mindset and believe I can do it. Take challenges. You are called for this. Don't be like, for me, I can't do it. I can't do it. Try. 
The first one you might not be able to, the second one you might not be able to, but the third for going, you might develop yourself and you perform better. So I think at any moment, as a female or as a girl, when you get yourself, any way you have to do something, just try your best. It might not go well, but subsequently, or as they say, practice makes man perfect, right? So you're not even expecting yourself to perform so well at the first instant, but as you try and move forward, you're able to do better. And know that no matter what you do, Allah first, pray. Always pray. Because the more you pray, the more God can be in your actions for you. Thank you very much. Oh, this is a golden pillar. Thank you. It symbolizes authority, support, and power. I know you are doing well, but I want you to do more on the campus. Encouraging the young ladies to be vocal, confident. As you said, you don't have to compromise on your values and your virtues because of work or money or marriage or any other thing. So as you hold this pillar, it's a very prof a prophetic pillar. It's giving you strength to do more. Thank you very much. May Allah be praised. Mm -hmm. And God bless you so much. Enjoy your Ramadan. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll see you out. Well. Thank you so much. I love you so much. And may Allah bless you. I'll come for your wedding, your um, Amalia. Yeah. So please. You're always welcome. Ah, thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you very much, Ma. For your time. Alright, this is my Quran. And I read it. I read the Bible. I read anything my heart finds to do. Or I'm led by the Spirit to read. Because reading is good. It takes you to places you've never been before. It gives you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to make it in life. Thank you once again for watching the Pillars Golden Moment. It's always an exciting moment. I told you, she's young, but very wise and intelligent. We've learned a lot about Ramadan, fasting, giving. And henceforth, me, I'm going to build churches. I'm going to, because when I build a church, everyone praying inside is going to pray and bless me. If I build a mosque, this is powerful. We've learned so much. Please, when you learn and you don't exhibit it, you don't put it to practice, it's as useless as anything. Whatever you hear and whatever your hand finds to do, do it well to the glory of Allah. Until we meet again on another powerful golden moment. I want to say thank you so much to Mastura Sana Tahiru, our oh, beautiful name, and all my viewers out there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Ronti Ajaku R A N. T I A D J A K U Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Subscribe to us and always follow us so that you always get the best videos ever. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>